It's a good morning. Day two here at Intergeo 2025. This year they actually have two floors. So there's like a, a downstairs and an upstairs. We spent a lot of time here downstairs yesterday. So hopefully today we're gonna actually go upstairs and check out some of the companies that are in the exhibit floor. All right, we're gonna go see some of our close friends here and what they're up to. I think you might recognize them. Uh, we, have, we have the biggest star of the survey on YouTube here, uh, Rami Tamimi. Ah, thank Welcome. you. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Yes, <laughs> You've mentioned service tools, so is it something when you mainly do online or do you have it? Uh, no, it's completely online, you know, and the, the beautiful thing is it is, um, go at your own pace, right? We have a lot of people that are working in the industry. They're business owners, but they work for a company. So we really don't want to restrict them to a certain time. We have quizzes. We have a final exam. Take it when you're ready. Take it because you want to improve your knowledge and skills. We've actually partnered with companies like Imlid and Pix4D who have given us free GNSS receivers and free access to uh, Pix4D Matic. You know, students can actually do labs on their own at home We've got a really unique ecosystem where we are fully online, but also we are doing outdoor labs and we are very hands-on and engaged. I consider yourself uh, being on uh, two sides of the river. Uh, your dad is an OG of, of the surveyors, right? Yet you are on the other side where you already understand all the new technology. Where do you see, are you going to, to push this narrative and this perception more? Or do you think it will always be going just for the, for the new stuff? And You cannot bypass the fundamentals. I'm talking learning how to traverse, learning how to run a level loop, learning how to do a resection. These are very fundamental principles in serving. So the reason technology struggles to do this, it's not that it struggles to do this, it struggles to show you and help you validate that your data is accurate. Understanding the math behind it, understanding where it comes from, that's the core of the fundamentals of survey. This is interesting. Try to tell me. Um, <laughs> if I want to implement total station in my workflow, I always need to go call surveyors because I don't understand them for total station. Yeah. To work. Would I be suitable customer for you? Would you be able to teach me how to work with total station that I could implement this workflow into my workflows, into my pipeline, what I actually do in my business? Yeah, because what you're going to do is you're going to tell me, all right, I'm working on this site. I'm working on this project. Here are pictures. Here is data. Here are, here's the history of my involvement in this project. You're going to make a post in our community. And not only am I going to respond, but probably seven or eight other folks in your shoes all around the world are going to respond. And they're going to tell you what they went through, what experiences they've had, uh, if they had just started with a total station, what challenges did they face? Perhaps some may have recommendations for you. So it's, it's a collective community. It's not just what Rami says. There's nothing wrong with just understanding how it's done and being able to speak the language to surveyors. So when you go to hire a surveyor, you know what you're talking about. You know what to ask them. You need to make sure that the person you're hiring knows what they're doing, you know, cost-wise too. We talk about contracts and how much we should be bidding for projects and the value of your time. I mean, a lot of these guys, you know, they're coming from doing drone projects for real estate companies, right? And they're getting paid hundreds of dollars. Okay, well, let's get into the mapping industry. Let's include survey control. Let's talk about coordinate systems and projections and start charging thousands of dollars. Now your time is worth so much more because you're providing a more valuable product. So the business development side and the professional development side is very important. But if you don't have clients and you don't have work, you don't have you know, a way to make money. What's the point of the whole education? One last question. What are the biggest struggles? New surveyor, educated in old way, come out of the school, what's going to happen? They're forced to have to be proactive to find this industry. You may have a university that has a laser scan, just let some dealer let them borrow it. And they do one laser scan the entire time that they were a student. And so they struggle with adapting and learning about new technology. And it really takes a proactive surveyor to say, you know what, I want to learn about this. I want to see how I can use this in my business. How can I improve my knowledge in reality capture so that I can be more efficient? So my recommendation, if you're trying to break into this space and you're a new surveyor, join a community, figure out what, you know, the bottlenecks are in their, you know, in their industries, figure out how you can solve their problems, figure out what it is that their process is, what issues they're facing, and how can you provide value for them? As a server and you provide value for someone in the reality capture space, not only are you going to learn about reality capture, but you're going to find more ways that surveying can be served. You don't have to work just in construction. 
right? I worked in the automotive industry. I worked at General Motors for three years doing sensor alignment and ground truth. They needed a surveyor to help them align sensors and then validate that the data that was being collected was accurate. So I left construction completely for a number of years and started working on automotive. Like I, was a, I, I was helping them solve a problem that I didn't even realize existed with the tools and the skills that I had learned at university. So that's my best advice. Um, and if you don't know where to find people, come to trade shows like Intergeo. You'll <laughs> find, <laughs> you'll find, not just me, you'll find so many people here. You'll meet so many great minds. And a lot of people come here looking for solutions, you know? So you are coming here to find people's problems and solve them for them, you know? So um, trade shows are a great place to come uh, to meet in person. They're all over the world. You don't have to come to just Intergeo. In, in the United States, we have a Geo Week, um, and that's a pretty big show. You can meet a lot of Americans in the industry. Um, but wherever you live in the world, you know, there's lots of shows, lots of uh, events that you can go to to network and meet others in your industry. It was a huge pleasure to have you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rami. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're going to go to Hexagon and check out their brand new total station that they just released. The AI TS-20. You know, we'll see if they give me a discount. <laughs> My name is Keith Peterson with Hexagon. We're looking at the new multi-mapper system. This is a next generation airborne sensor, hybrid sensor. So we have imaging and LiDAR in, in one hug package. Oblique cameras in all four directions. A wonderful across swath array in, in Nadia. RGB plus near infrared. LiDAR system up to two megahertz. So we're looking at a 60 degree field of view in the LiDAR, about a 66 degree field of view on, on the Nadir imagery. It supports the standard Meeker interface so we can mount this on a helicopter or various helicopter models, but it can also go into a stabilized mount uh, and use your standard uh, survey aircraft. Really aiming this at uh, various corridor applications, small municipality mapping, uh, meshes, can all go down in through the existing hexagon workflow uh, to do all the data product generation, whether that's orthophotos, true orthophotos, or ultimately uh, the mesh for any type of uh, survey applications uh, you're looking to do. Hello, my name is Johannes Hutz. I'm working for Leica Geosystems and I'm in charge for the BLK Arc. The BLK Arc is a, is a light mobile laser scanner. So that means you scan while you move. Eh? And while you move, you capture your data directly in 3D with our SLAM technology. So we have multiple SLAMs, we have an IMU, we have a visual SLAM, so we work with our cameras where we detect features. We have a LiDAR SLAM where we de detect the environment, create planes and intersection of those planes, and all with this, the position of the scanner is always known in space. This one is a very comfortable solution because you can do a large scale mapping simply by moving um, our scan card. Um, an alternative for outdoor, with a backpack you can mount things and you are hands-free and can walk through the various environments and scan like this. The BLK Arc can also do in addition um, static scans. So while you move you can stand still, do a static scan and the static scan is visualized here on the screen. While you capture, you get your data streamed this is fantastic to increase the density of your point cloud and to capture any kind of details like um, thin cables coming out of the wall. And then you can use various software packages to process the data. You can do this one in our newly acquired Hexagon Pinpoint software. You can do this with Register or you can upload the data to Reality Cloud Studio and you do everything in the cloud. That's a short summary of the Leica PLK Arc a unique mobile laser scanner um, that is fit for any purpose. Thank you. So this is a pinpoint software. So here we have two jobs which show clearly the same building. And in the software you can now kind of align these jobs with each other and generate one clean 3D model. Second main functionality is then to clean up the model, cleaning up everything or deleting everything around a building which I'm not really interested in at the moment. If I now want to de de delete the surrounding, I can just invert the selection and delete and I have already initial cleanup of the building. So there's some geometry which clearly does not belong here. And with the mirror tool, you can detect 
from where this geometry was actually taken. And then mark it, and now all scan positions that were scanning through the mirror are marked at the same time. So you see that there are different geometries here, which are generated by this mirror. So from different scan positions that look through the mirror, ghost geometry has been created. And from this software, we can then go to the modeler. It's all about uh, extracting information or data from the 3D model. So as I said, in this software, everything is about generating results fast and extract information from a 3D point cloud in an intuitive and a fast way. Okay guys, we are here at the digital booth with RTC 360 and the GNSS solution. First of all, it's easy to manage this in managing field. We have some possibility to manage the reference directly the data in field. Using Cyclone field, we can acquire the position of GNSS, which is exactly aligned in parallel, in parallel verticality with the center of the laser scanner, and then we can collect the GNSS data. With the cyclone field, we have the georeferences possibility, directly in field, and then once the data is uh, exported, the data is already be used uh, in the office software. Second possibility is to use cyclone register, and through cyclone register, we can automatically create the point in the center of the laser scanning position, and then assign the deltas for the GNSS position. This can open different possibilities. First of all, we can do static, or we can do RTKL measurement, and we can directly integrate this kind of solution. This can be speed up the project that in clean field and be performance immediately. Okay, guys? Hi, Rami. Hi, how are you? Thanks, I'm fine. How are yeah. you too? Yeah, I'm excited to Exciting be here. Exciting day today. It's the first time we really showed a big public the TS20. It's very agile, very dynamic. We now are able to stream 25 hertz of coordinate data. We have got several AI functionality. We compare the configured prism with the measured one. If it's a different one, we can correct it automatically. We also use AI for power search and ATR to make it more robust in all environmental conditions. We have got a communication side cover with two eSIMs in. One is for localization and protection, so in case it gets stolen you can block it. And the other one is the data eSIM. The customer can put a data contract on, you can stream big data to the cloud or whatever you want. The long range Bluetooth is now not anymore on the radio handle, it's fixed integrated. Here we have got the antenna for long range Bluetooth and wireless LAN. For the AP20, also, the low energy Bluetooth is integrated here. The whole concept, including the low Bluetooth low energy, the new motors, ATR and lock performance with 25 Hertz data streaming, is now a complete, complete brand new feeling with the AP20. So the initialization, you just pick up the prism from the floor and it's initialized. Due to the high dynamic of the total station, the AP20 has got now incredible performance. You really lift it up from the floor, it's initialized, you put it static, it remains. Because you don't have to take care any about, anymore about, uh, is it initialized, how long does it stay, just work. Yeah. Concentrate on your work, you do not need to concentrate on the AP20. So I expect that a lot will go in the direction of where the total station is one sensor in a big system. Time synchronization we made a lot. The protocols are new, microseconds are possible. So we expect in the whole robotic market that there will be a big change. And also for common surveying, it's getting comfortable, it's safe. There are more and more steps in that avoid mistakes. The tilt pole itself, the prison type detection. So concentrate on your work. Do not take care about Appreciate settings. that. Awesome. Thank you guys. We appreciate the innovation and the support inside of the surveying industry. And of course, it's not a completed visit at the Hexagon booth without grabbing coffee from their coffee bar. So good. Love it. Thank you. All right, so that's it for day number two. We've got one more day tomorrow, so be sure to check back for day number three here at Intergeo 2025.